Never in my life did I expect myself to be sitting around in my underwear at 3 a.m. in the morning playing a game about unhappy raccoons. And honestly, when you look like this guy, I mean, it's kinda to be expected. But here I am, shooting, clawing, and slamming my way through hundreds of enemies as I attempt to go where no raccoon has gone before. The best part of all this though, I was reached out to by the studio that is in charge of the game, and I was presented this unique opportunity to take a sponsored look at it before it launches to the rest of the world. So if this looks like something that you might be interested in, I urge you to go ahead and click that link in the description of the pinned comment below to pre-register and get ready to, uh, well, hopefully become a slightly less unhappy raccoon. Unhappy raccoon is an interesting blend of action and roguelike mechanics, featuring a diverse selection of characters, each with their own weapons, their own abilities, and more. The game takes place in two separate areas, within your spaceship and in the worlds that you visit. On your spaceship, you have a couple different friends that are along for the ride, like this guy right here. He allows you to upgrade your weapons, increasing base statistics. He also allows you to purchase additional weapons. This machine over here allows you to purchase new characters. Now, admittedly, I never thought that I would ever utter these words out loud, but you can buy raccoon husbandos and waifus to use in place of the weird dude that you started off with. Trust me, you're going to want to. Now. I, I kind of wanted to try some of the premium characters out, so I went ahead and I purchased the two that actually cost real money. I think offering premium characters, especially at $2.99, is much fairer to players than the RNG gacha present within the genre currently, because I know all of you can relate to having to spend hundreds of dollars to attempt to obtain the character that you want and still somehow failing to and falling short. Now I am more than happy to personally pay a set price to guarantee that I get the hero that I want to play as. And again, I believe that Unhappy Raccoon provides these heroes at a really great price compared to their competition. Each hero has their own unique skins, some of which are quite, uh, well, <laughs> have you ever wanted to dress a raccoon up as a hot maid, because that is entirely possible. It's not something that I ever thought I'd say out loud again, but <laughs> man, it is, it is possible. Before we leave our spaceship and get into the bulk of the game, the exploration and the combat, I do want to note that there is a talent system that is present in the game that makes things exponentially easier or more difficult. Talents provide significant alterations to your heroes, boosts to your maximum HP, percentage boosts to your base attack, your HP region, your defense. Ignoring this feature will make the game impossible. Now after selecting your base talents, you deploy your hero of choice out onto your first alien planet, which is a, a kind of barren wasteland. The game consists of a group of instanced zones. Each zone possesses a variety of different monsters, each with their own strengths, their own weaknesses, and their own abilities. For instance, some monsters shoot bombs at you. Others have shields that you are required to whittle down before you can actually deal direct damage to their HP. Upon entering a zone, it becomes immediately locked off and you're forced into engaging several waves of enemies. After eliminating enemies, you're given money, a type of card that directly affects your character. These, much like talents, provide drastic alterations to your hero, increasing your damage, providing regenerative properties, altering your elemental affinity, changing your ability in its entirety. All of these features combined add a level of depth, many layers with which to largely customize your hero, providing a very unique, very distinct playstyle unlike anyone else's. Providing this large a sense of freedom is refreshing and honestly gives you a lot of control over crafting something that you actually enjoy as opposed to following a cookie cutter pre-built class archetype. Just don't be like me and YOLO the entire thing, putting everything into damage. Because trust me, you're gonna die. The majority of zones consist of several waves of enemies. However, you'll find the odd zone with an elite monster requiring a little more strategy and power. So, 
normal monsters, elite monsters, and then finally boss monsters. Boss monsters were so much more difficult. See this guy? Yeah, I, uh, I tried fighting him with Ares, and he messed me up. I could barely scratch the dude before he left me face down in the dirt. Speaking of, I just want to note here that while I did try Ares out and I thoroughly enjoyed his playstyle, he just felt so much more inferior to Autumn. She has this passive shield regen that makes her absolutely unkillable. I spent hours recording footage for this game and I, I didn't take like any damage at all, until Ravis, who showed me that I probably built my hero incorrectly. She absolutely destroyed me. She Literally, she killed me in like three shots, not leaving me any real time to react. Boss monsters are unique in so that not only are they substantially more powerful than your average monster, and even elite monster, but they have their own unique character models, their own weapon types, their own abilities and mechanics. I didn't really encounter much trouble up until Rabbis, but my god, I, I, uh, well, I did not expect such a large spike in terms of difficulty, but at the same time, I appreciate a good challenge. Although admittedly, I guess I should have poured more talents into HP and regeneration as opposed to raw damage. But if you guys know me, you know that I love building glass cannons, so this is realistically nothing new. Losing against Rabbits just meant that I either needed to reset my character and focus on a different area, maybe I needed to use a different character altogether, or just needed to learn how to uh, how to dodge, which is something I have been attempting to perfect for roughly about the last 20 years of my life. But at the same time, with how she literally ninjaed herself around the zone like that, I don't think any level of dodging really would have saved me from my untimely fate. As noted, there are several zones in total that comprise each planet. You make your way in a linear fashion through the majority of them, finding your way through waves of monsters, but you'll also come across special zones that are hidden away from the rest of the world. These feature battles with specific win conditions, survive 60 seconds, kill X number of monsters in X amount of time, meaning you're required to pay attention to where you're going lest you miss your chance at additional goodies. And trust me, with a large spike you'll no doubt see in terms of difficulty, you're going to need all the help you can get. Each planet has their own unique aesthetic. The first planet I landed on was some kind of badlands or wasteland. The second planet took me completely underwater. I almost felt like Ariel from The Little Mermaid for a period, except I was forced into repeated confrontations with lobster people. I don't recall Sebastian ever attacking Ariel. I did have my own army of raccoons though, which were essentially like my own little version of Flounder. So that was cool. Speaking of my army of raccoons, that is actually something that I purchased while on one of the planets. You can purchase additional skills, things like aerial bombardments, electric fences. They're added onto your ability wheel and allow for you to have a greater degree of control over how you play. With a number of different abilities you can equip, you'll never get bored and will always be finding new ways of tackling engagements. Overall, there is a lot to do in Unhappy Raccoon. Lots of interesting, very diverse planets to explore, a lot of enemies to kill, and even more interesting ways of killing them. You have more control over the build of your character than I typically find in video games, which allows for a lot more self-identity. It's always more fun creating your own class and your own build without having to be forced into something that you kinda like, but you kinda don't at the same time. For a mobile game, I can honestly say, I did not expect this. Again, if this sounds like something that you would be interested in trying, the open beta begins on October 8th, and you can pre-register by clicking that link in the description and the pinned comment below. If you pre-register, you'll also obtain a rare unique skin for Katana, which is something you're not gonna wanna miss out on.